Our month-long journey through the depths of darkness has seen nothing short of extraordinary adventure. We have integrated within and discovered the true fate of those who refuse to eat meat. Held off our immense craving for Rocky Road as to not insult our newfound companions. Dethrone the glorified King of the Frogs, more than once I might add. Fought creatures of silky origins and rats with wings. Discovered how the wild got such a name through encounters with living, breathing hentai and things that probably really shouldn't be on your head. And oh yeah, we most likely crapped our pants as crap flew at our faces as we ran for dear life from horrors unimaginable. But it wasn't all bad. We found that slime actually does pay, and we met our best friend Hutch along the way, with his many forms to boot, and he gave us the strength to conquer our fears and leave the ruins in ruin, as we walked away with treasures of incredible worth and power. However, it has all been leading to this. There is an ancient being of pure darkness that plagues these ruins, and it is up to us to seal it away forever. But before we do, may I remind you that if you need fossils for an odd skeleton, you should be heading out looking for spalagmites and stalagmites. You'll be the number one archaeologist soon enough if you do so. The ancient key rests with the ancient guardian, so make sure to navigate the windy halls of the labyrinth to reach his domain. Then, feel free to break out the cheese. Once dead, so, the key is yours for the taking, along with all the other goodies, of course. And don't forget, the key must be socketed within the gateway to bring the atrium's nightmare cycle to its peak. But, about that black heart... We must face the shadows of all shadows in order to obtain one. So, find those suspicious marble pieces, break your back to get them properly placed, wait for the proper moon cycle to reach a new moon, then get your sonic on as you dodge and weave your way to the intrepid Shadow Atrium. But it's time, everyone. No more waiting. Nothing more stands in our way. We fought through hell to get here, and there ain't nothing too strong for us now. So, you yeah, hear that, Fuel Weaver? I'm gonna punch you into next millennia, you dumb, stupid, dumb, ancient, and overly powerful being. I'm gonna... Uh... Whoops. Really, Beard? It's the final boss of the game, you numpty. Of course you need to prepare for him. Yeah, well, Beardo ain't the sharpest tool in the fruit basket, so don't mind him. But don't worry, we'll try to get through this quickly. Killing and usurping the queen could serve you well. So, have fun doing so through any means necessary in order to walk away with the potential for jelly beans, meaning healing over time, the recipe for bundling wrap, which is always flippin' useful, but more importantly, the Bee Queen Crown. The crown turns most any negative sanity auras into positive ones, and heck, it's damn fashionable to boot. Man, we really do pick on the Mac Tusk, don't we? And we must do it again, as we are after his spoils once more. But this time around, one item's importance far outweighs the other, and that's the tusk. For you see, we aren't just making a walking cane here, we are getting ancient with it and crafting ourselves a lazy explorer. It will not only be pivotal for the fight itself, it could potentially make getting to the fight as simple as a single right click. More on that later. For now, we need to kill a Mama Goose Moose and the little baby demon spawns that accompany her, as the down feathers they drop are going to help us create a very useful item. But we must also become the worst Mr. Sandman ever, and not actually bring the dreams, but rather end them, as the Volt Goat horns must be ours as well. 
Toss in the gear along with the rest of our plunders, and you got yourself a weather pane. A weapon that will serve more as a tool to make one of the aspects of the fight all the more manageable. But FYI, you are definitely going to need more than one if you're soloing. As for health, whatever helps you treat what ails you is fine by me. But sanity might have to be considered here, as Fuel has a minus 400 sanity per minute aura. The same as Clopsy. If you have the Bee Queen crown though, sanity won't be an issue. But you will need plenty of munchies to raise it if you don't. But there is a sanity altering item that we cannot leave behind. And that's the Nightmare Amulet. The fight. Heck, even getting to the fight is impossible without one, so do not forget it. The amulet forces the player to zero sanity when equipped, and that's a mechanic we will use often throughout our final bout. But Beard, all this talk, but we haven't even discussed how to get to this fight of ours. Well, that's cause we haven't talked about these yet, ya numpties. Tenta Pillars. They are our ticket to the atrium. But what do I mean by that? Well. Once you handle one and all its tiny tentacles looking to smack you senseless, the tentapillar will retreat, leaving a big ol' hole in the ground that you can hop into. And, just like the wormholes up above, you will be transported to another tentapillar spawn somewhere down under. Word of advice, Fugu Hutch can help you out in finding the correct tentapillar that leads you to our ultimate destination. The sorrow-filled halls of the intrepid atrium. You've made it. Well done. But remember when I said the lazy explorer could make life easier? That's because if the branches spawn close enough, one can telepoof into the atrium, forthgoing any need to play trial and error with which tentapillar is the right one. But what is the atrium? Well, it's really just a labyrinth with some slight tweaks. You'll still have dangling depth dwellers looking to pounce, and some ornate chests will be sprinkled about too. Now, every world gen is different, which also means every atrium is too. So keep in mind that you could have more to deal with and more loot to come, or less. But whatever the case, you will eventually run into a wall or two of one of these obelisks. They are indestructible, but we still need to pass them to continue forward. And that is where the first use of the Nightmare Ami comes in the play. When sanity is at 15% or lower, the obelisks lower to allow the player to pass. But careful now. Don't get stuck down here with no way out. Soon enough, you will make your way to what is known as the Ancient Gateway, the portal to the Gate Realms. Once more, socket the Ancient Key to bring the Atrium to its nightmarish peaks. Construct the proper odd skeleton, as seen here, and have the Shadow Atrium at the ready to spawn in our friend. But, seeing as this is the end of our cave series, I thought, why not celebrate, right? So I invited the community to join me to not only ring in the end, but also to put our ringing in Fuel Weaver's ears as we come together to smack him dead. But thanks to all those who joined me and for looking highly fashionable along the way. If you think you are ready, gather around and use the Shadow Atrium on the Odd Skeleton. If you do so, the ancient fuel weaver becomes not so ancient any longer, and the fight is on. Now, if you are playing solo or in smaller manageable groups, staying near the borders is absolutely paramount, because fuel has an attack that locks players within bone cages for a few seconds, but it can be completely negated if you are near the edges. However, due to us having almost a full game, you're likely just going to be seeing us using our lazy explorers to get out of that one. Make note that you can bait out three attacks by the time he goes for his trapping attack. But just keep an eye on him raising and smashing the ground because it is on a timer. His normal melee is very easily kiteable, so please, don't be afraid to stay close and kite him. 
And when you get him below 10,000 health, the second phase begins. Now, two very, very important things to note. One, do whatever you can to not let those little creepy crawlies reach him. If they do, he will eat them and restore 400 health each time. Something you do not want to happen, as but two or three can just completely negate any damage you may have just done. But it doesn't end there. The Fuel Weaver will encase itself within a shadowy shield that blocks 100% of player damage. And the only way to break it is to destroy the Unseen Hands. And the only way to do that is through being insane. Hence the need once more for the Nightmare Amulets. Once the hands are destroyed, and bloody make sure to get all six each time, you can continue to damage the Fuel Weaver. But keep in mind, there is another mechanic at play. Fuel can mind control whoever is insane, and if he does, he will render you useless for three and a half seconds. So, if you see your screen filling up with crap, get the amulet off ASAP. You will continue this pattern of attacks until he is dead. It is one heck of an endurance fight with many unique mechanics. So please, do your best to manage it all. If you do, you will be rewarded with a dramatic Fuel Weaver vanquishing, as you have just defeated the final boss of Don't Starve Together. Well, flippin' done, everyone. But what happens now? Well, after about four minutes, the Ancient Gateway will destabilize and literally explode making everything anew once again, and also consuming the ancient key along the way. The wilds are wild once more, as the hentai and slurpers return to wreck havoc. The potassium will flow once more as the banana munchers return to the fold. The once abundant ruins will become abundant once more, as the loot, but also the dangers, reign once again and the Ancient Guardian will look to defend his place within the Labyrinth as he has done for centuries. Yes, killing the Ancient Fuel Weaver resets the ruins, but you must wait 20 days to reset the Ancient Gateway in order to face him down again. But I do think it's time we discuss this bloody loot. Bone Armor allows you to completely absorb damage from any source every 5 seconds which is absolutely insane when you factor in kiting. You can just stand there and take a shot to the face like a champion, kite out the next attack, and by the time the next one comes, five seconds will have passed, and thus, the cycle continues. I still advise wearing some headgear, just in case, as you will take full damage if the bone armor isn't ready yet. It has 16 uses, but as if it couldn't get any better, you can just refuel it with Nightmare Fuel to get 4 uses back, and the armor doesn't even fully break at 0%. It will just sit in your inventory waiting to be refueled. Bone Armor is absolutely insane and completely overpowered in the right hands. But hey, you just killed the final boss of the game, so it makes sense that you would have fancy toys like this. But you know what else is bonkers? The Bone Helm. No, seriously, equip it to experience the effects of having no sanity, but with the added bonus of rendering every shadow creature non-hostile. This, coupled with the Bone Helm or just other players, is going to make farming Nightmare Fuel an absolute cinch. Oh, and can help you navigate the Nightmare Cycle with ease. But those aren't the only toys we get to play with now because the Fuel Weaver also drops what is known as the Shadow Thurapole. It is a very, very neat little thing that gives the player the ultimate power over incredibly powerful and ancient beings. But I do think we will save that for another video very soon. So there you have it everyone. Not only a guide on the ancient Fuel Weaver and his impact on our worlds, but also an end to our incredible journey through the caves and ruins. I extend my heartfelt thanks to all those who watched, and I welcome the literal thousands of new faces who have joined our communities across the internet. 
There is certainly more to come, and I cannot wait to experience it all with you. Take care, folks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.